Hello everyone, it's Sam over at ScorpioRisingAstrology.com. It is Saturday and we are continuing our Signs 101 series by filming the Saturn ruled signs of Capricorn and Aquarius. We'll start with Capricorn, that beloved Earth sign that tends to be uh, so loved and so hated by so many. Um, just like any sign, Capricorn is misunderstood in some areas and has some fascinating myths behind it. So let's go ahead and discuss what this goat-like creature um, is doing in our zodiac. Okay. So first and foremost, if you, if you take nothing away from Capricorn, the thing that you need to understand is that Capricorn is a sign that rules its life based on achievement and success and how it can face up and stack up against adversity and achieve and accomplish what it set out to do often at the compromising of the people, places, and resources around it. Yeah, Capricorn isn't known for being the kindest sign. And that's really what we see in terms of ruling planet influence. Like when we look at Taurus and Libra, signs that are notoriously lovely, they are ruled by Venus, goddess of love and abundance. When we look at Capricorn and Aquarius, the two Saturn ruled signs, we see a little bit more dryness. We see a little bit more stubbornness. We see a little bit more fierceness because that is the energetic of the planet uh, that is ruling the sign. So let's unpack the style of achievement that Capricorn is really after by breaking it down into its constituent parts, its needs, uh, its highest virtues, and some of its myths. Okay, now here's, here's where we get kind of interesting with Capricorn. So Capricorn isn't just a goat. Capricorn is a sea goat. And this is where we start to get into some really fascinating stuff with Capricorn. I just attended a workshop uh, prior to the recording of this video with Jason Hawley, who's an amazing astrologer and um, psychology professional. And he talked about the myths of Capricorn and how we need to respect the idea of Capricorn being an earth sign, but Capricorn also being associated with the water element through its tail, through its sea half. Um, Capricorn is the patron sign of sailors uh, and all seafaring people and creatures. It is also the patron sign of the shoreline um, and all resources and abundance that would come from the sea. Capricorn and its tail has uh, one of the more popular myths that circulated, but if you're interested, I highly encourage you just to Google Capricorn myths. It's great reading. Um, but the most popular myth would be the god Pan, who was escaping the grips of the uh, demon god Typhon. Um, and Pan being a goat god, jumped into the sea, but transformed only half of his body. Uh, and that is where we get the fishtail of Capricorn, but the goat side of Pan. Um, and that being one of the myths that is associated with Capricorn. Another is associated with Precus, P-R-I-C-U-S, um, probably butchering that in terms of pronunciation, but Precus was the original sea goat who had the power of controlling time, and all of his children would uh, go to the seashore to bask in the sun, but the longer they did so, they transformed into the land goats that we know today and subsequently lost their tails and their ability to think and speak and became normal animals. And Prickus actually rewound time every single time that this happened and could not prevent his children from venturing into lives of their own, losing their innate grace, their innate intelligence from that mythological world and transforming into goats no matter how much he tried. And so he eventually pleaded with Kronos um, to kill him because he was immortal. And instead he was transformed into the sea goat sign of Capricorn where he could watch over his children for the rest of his days. So I think that 
there is so much more to Capricorn than just the, the hard exterior that a lot of astrology sites and a lot of astrologers will have you believe. There is a depth, there is an emotional side to Capricorn that is rarely expressed, but I think is important to respect because of the symbology and because of the myth behind Capricorn, the sea goat, not just the regular goat. However, Capricorn's dominant element is Earth. So we are looking at Earth as an element of resource, of stability, of predictability, of making sure that things are consistent, but also the material world. Capricorn is very much a rational sign. Um, part of it, it gets from Saturn, but part of it, it gets from that earthy aspect of Capricorn really thriving in things that it can touch, things that it can see, things that it can tangibly feel and measure. And that's with all the earth signs. The earth signs of Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn all are very much at home in the material world. But what makes Capricorn different from the other Earth signs is its mode of cardinality. Uh, and this is what makes Capricorn a leadership-oriented sign, just like Cancer, just like Aries, and just like Libra. There is this active side of Capricorn. Although Capricorn as an Earth sign will be the slowest of all the other cardinal signs because Earth takes its time. Yeah, Capricorn is the mountain. The tectonic plates that are shifting, they're moving, they're initiating, albeit slowly, and then a hundred years later you have this massive mountain. Um, but as opposed to the speed, <laughs> as opposed to the speed of Aries, as opposed to the speed of Libra, or even the compassionate kind of empathy of, of Cancer, Capricorn is definitely going to be a little bit more slow, a little bit more systematic. And Saturn as a planet rules time. Uh, and when we see Saturn's influence over Capricorn, one of the things that really resonates with Capricorn is that metaphor of the tortoise and the hare. You know, the tortoise eventually wins the race, spoiler alert, uh, because the hare is slick and thinks that it can get away with slacking off and speeding through the race. But because the tortoise is diligent, because the tortoise uses its energy wisely because it does not stop because it is so determined um, and it will finish the race and it will finish first. Capricorn often embodies that energy of getting to the pinnacle of whatever it achieves, albeit maybe a decade later than everybody else, sometimes a lifetime later. Uh, when we look at the symbol of Capricorn, we do see the sea goat in that uh, that hoof or the horns, depending on what you want to look at uh, visually, but that, that V shape representing the horns or the hooves of that goat aspect, and then the curly Q at the end representing that tail of the, the amphibious aspect of the, the water element of the sea goat. Capricorn's highest virtue is its determination, again with the tortoise and the hare analogy, but with that cardinal earth, you know, Capricorn always has its eye on the prize, always. Even when you think Capricorn is sleeping, even when you think that it's not moving, it's always strategizing. Capricorn is really a sign of strategy but it's playing chess, not checkers. It's really taking its time with its moves. It's really thinking 10 steps ahead um, and it's budgeting its energy accordingly. But that does require a fierce determination that is a slow burn as opposed to the quick burn of Aries or any of the fire signs or even the kind of flitting intellectual aspects of the air signs um, and certainly not the feely nature of the water signs. When we look at Capricorn's determination, it is, it is fierce, but it is that slow roll. It is that rumbling that, you know, oh, it's fine. It'll, it'll be, we're, we're safe for now. And then 15 years rolls around and that, that rumbling becomes a serious earthquake or a lava explosion. Um, and Capricorn's like, I, I was warning you. Um, and that's kind, of the, that's kind of the essence of that determination. The deepest weakness of Capricorn, and any of you who have fallen in love with a Capricorn or have a Capricorn friend or somebody who you try to invest emotionally, and I say try to invest emotionally in, um, is Capricorn's notorious sense of coldness. In the process of seeking what it wants and in the, the determination of Capricorn to find what it defines as success, because every Capricorn will define success differently based on their upbringing, based on their kind of personal compass. 
Capricorn does have a nasty habit of isolating. And when I say isolating, I really mean they put the ice in isolation. Um, they will push people away without a second thought because they just don't line up with, or they are distracting uh, from, the, from the project at hand. And that can be really, really tough is I've known and seen this actually in the wild where Capricorns will push away people that they know, like, and trust, and then try to reapproach those relationships 10, 15, 20 years later once they feel, once the Capricorn feels like they're in a stable spot and that they've gotten what they need to get. By, but by that time, the person has moved on. The person has no longer uh, room for that relationship with that Capricorn, and that can be absolutely devastating to them, which just reinforces their coldness. Um, and they think, oh, well, if I just strive more, I'll be more attractive. If I just kind of put the bar higher, then I'll get the people that I need. And that's that's a, a slippery slope. So I'd have to say that that determination does definitely come at a price with Capricorn. And the price is the coldness or the isolation of those that Capricorn really, although they, although they don't show it. Yeah, um, it, is, it is the vulnerability of that tail of Capricorn, that wet, watery side of Capricorn that we don't get to see, that's often underneath the surface, um, that becomes so cold and compromised. The needs of Capricorn are going to be first and foremost time. Uh, Capricorn does not like to make decisions lightly, and because of that, they do need time to consider. Now, unlike Libra, who's infamous for indecision, um, Capricorn will make a decision. It may take a little bit of time, but the decision that they make will also be completely final, and they will have written one or two research papers in order to back up their findings by the end of it. Uh, Capricorn does research very, very well. Uh, they love their facts. They love their rules. Again, the Earth aspect of the sign coming forward with that. Capricorn will also seek out training. Um, you know, when we look at Capricorn as one of the sign that one of the signs that's constantly pursuing mastery, yeah, uh, training really comes at the heart of that. So Capricorn is often obsessed with particular ideas and will seek out mentorship uh, and research and information pools in order to build their case towards uh, whatever it is they feel like they need in order to get to that highest mountain peak. Capricorn does also require a lot of independence, and in fact, they're very much independent people in general. Um, that independence often is associated with that coldness, that isolation of other people, but the independence with Capricorn is also, you know, I'm strong enough to do this myself, and if I don't do it myself, then it's not worth anything because I haven't proved anything to myself or the world. And that level of determination and that level of independence can sometimes be very confusing for other people and make other people feel very isolated when really it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the way that Capricorn functions, which is why we need to spend time analyzing each of these signs because just like a love language, yeah, Capricorn's idea of independence does not mean that they don't love you, that they don't like you, but that they're unable to a certain extent to express how much they do enjoy your presence because that enjoyment is contra to the level of energy that they need to be focused on their independence and determination. Um, and in some ways they feel that they are not worthy of that love. Um, and that's, that's also kind of part of the dynamic because until they prove to themselves and the world that they are worthy through their long-term accomplishments, then they will not slow down enough to receive that, uh, that connection. Now, Capricorn is often smothered by emotion, and we'll see uh, a parallel with the other Saturn-based sign of Aquarius, but when we look at Capricorn, the feels really weigh a Capricorn down, because the more emotion that something has, the harder it is to rationalize, the messier it gets, and Capricorn can't work with that. Uh, Capricorn prefers raw information, data, things that it can, uh, to a certain degree, manipulate and organize and really kind of sink its teeth into and extract value from. But when we start to get into the subjective realms of emotion, Capricorn hates that space and prefers to stay away from it at all costs. But again, that will also trigger the manifestation of isolation and coldness. 
Capricorn is also smothered by interference. If you want to help a Capricorn, don't. Just telling you now. Um, even if they say that they want your help, it's a trap because they will give you the task that is least interfering with what they're doing. Um, and I've seen this time and time again. Um, it, the best thing that you could do for a Capricorn who's immersed in a project or you want to help that Capricorn is to focus on what you're focusing on and to do that thing exceptionally well so that when Capricorn finally gets finished with what they're doing, they look at your progress and they're admiring of your progress and therefore your progress and their progress kind of smile at each other and that connection is born through that progress. Um, but if you're constantly wanting to help or to dote or to hand them tools or be helpful to them in some way, it, it defeats their process of independently doing a task that makes them feel accomplished. And in some ways that can threaten their sense of self-esteem, uh, but also uh, belittle their task. And I know that that's not the intention that you carry, but at the same time, we need to understand how Capricorn thinks about these things. And if it's not doing it by itself, then it doesn't get all the credit. And Capricorn needs to build that credit, needs to build those earthy resources of value and self-esteem in order to be the best person that they believe that they should be. Uh, so best thing to do is not interfere and focus on your own stuff. Then last but not least, uh, rivaling only Aries and Leo in their ability to compete and face a challenge, Capricorn is one of the worst signs to go into head-to-head -head combat with. Do not argue with a Capricorn. They will shut you down so fast it will make your head spin. Um, and they do that through their sheer force of will, uh, but also the facts that they've accumulated throughout their life. You do not know the depths of the information that they have accrued and the facts that they will whip out and the emotional blackmail that they will potentially use in order to shut down your challenge so that they can get back to doing what they were doing before you decided to interfere um, and, and smother their process. <laughs> so that's, that's also kind of something to consider when, when we look at Capricorn is the challenges that they face, they're excellently equipped, especially the older the Capricorn is. Back to that Saturnian idea of time, Young Capricorns tend to be rather stubborn, rather young, uh, but they still pack a punch and will kind of headbutt you in the gonads and take those cheap shots. But the older the Capricorn gets, the more mature, the wiser that they get, the more they have these treasure troves of information that they can just pull on to shut you down in any challenge that they would face. Um, and that's, that's some serious power. Cool. So that is Capricorn in a nutshell. If you enjoyed this, let me know if there were some aha moments or if you think that I missed something. Feel free to use the comment section below. Continue to watch the Signs 101 series for your sun, your moon, your rising sign. We'll be covering all the signs on their planetary day just to give them their proper hat tilt. Uh, but I am also a professional astrologer. So if you have some Capricorn placements that you would like questions answered about, we can always go one-on-one -on -one in your chart and really start to unpack what it is the stars are saying about you. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the signs or more about astrology, you can always visit my website and take some online classes, which are pre-recorded and totally downloadable. Just go to www.scorpiorisingastrology.com and click the consultations page for consults or the online classes page for classes. In the meantime, we'll continue our Signs 101 series. We'll see you again in the next video and may the stars be ever in your favor.